Hi, I'm Jonathan from Nextcoder. Well, actually, I'm Jonathan's AI clone, but we'll talk more about that later. In this first chapter, we show you in four lessons how AI can be used to reduce inequalities, lower barriers to participation, and support marginalized communities. AI comes in many forms, but the most famous are LLMs, especially those with chat-based interfaces like ChatGPT. In this lesson, you will learn these three things about language AIs. How to interact with common chat-based AIs, perfecting, saving, and reusing prompts, and choosing and using the right AI models. In this chapter, we'll use examples related to inclusion to teach you these AI skills. Unfortunately, many people still consider inclusion to be a luxury that can be taken care of once all other social problems have been solved. But inclusion is not an optional concession to people with disabilities. Inclusion is a human right, and inclusion affects many more people than is commonly believed. That is exactly why we chose this topic for our first chapter. In this lesson, we will apply the United Nations definition of inclusion. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948 established that all human beings are equal in dignity and rights without discrimination of any kind. Every person should be an equal part of society, regardless of gender, ethnic origin, disability, age or other individual differences. I hope this makes it clear. This definition of inclusion goes far beyond the focus on disability. In addition to the 10.4 million people living with a recognised severe disability in Germany, there are many other groups who we can far more effectively include with the help of AI. There are 18.4 million people living in Germany who are 65 years or older. That's almost a quarter of the population. And 22 million people whose native language is not German. Of these, 500,000 are children who fled war or persecution and applied for asylum, many from the Ukraine. In addition, there are an estimated 12 to 16 million people who could be considered neurodiverse. That is up to 20% of the population. This includes diagnoses such as autism, ADHD, high sensitivity, dyslexia, dyscalculia, Tourette's, and other neurological conditions. Another highly marginalised group are the 3 million children affected by poverty. In other words, about 1 in 5 children in Germany. And in this country, the educational success of children is largely influenced by their parents' home and the resources available there. We believe that artificial intelligence can make it easier to support all these people. For visually impaired and blind people, AI models such as GPT-4 or O1 from OpenAI can now describe quite accurately what can be seen in images. Thanks to AI, documents, applications and forms can be translated into most languages. But even for native speakers, many documents from authorities or offices are difficult to understand. This is where AI can help by translating them into simple language. And of course, teaching materials can also be translated or customised using AI tools. AI systems in the future could also improve educational equity by providing children living in poverty or in educationally disadvantaged households with the help and support they currently lack. It is precisely this potential of AI that we want to demonstrate in this first chapter. We also use the content of this course to demonstrate the power of many AI tools. For example, we used AI tools to clone our voices or create so-called video avatars of us. We'll show you exactly how we did this in the next chapters. But to do this, we should first look at some of the basics of working with AI. Let's get started right away. In our course, there is always a practical exercise first, and then we explain how it all works. 